Hello, everyone. This is Brett Rogers, your host here on the Logos of Airflow's podcast experience, a place where we come together to learn how to love God, love others, and make disciples. If that sounds like the kind of thing you'd be interested in, I'm glad to have you here. Stay tuned for me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining me and whatever time it is that you're connecting here with me. It's good to have you on the Logos Veritas podcast. My name is Brett Rogers. I'm your host on the Logos Veritas podcast and getting straight into things today. I want to be able to talk with you here about passage in James chapter 1. Uh, we're looking at James chapter 1 verses 19 and 20 specifically. Uh, and then we're going to well, we're going to get into some more here, starting in verse 22. Let me ask something, though, before we get into that. You ever gotten angry? I mean, like, really angry. Like, the angry that, like, maybe scares you. <laughs> kind of angry. Like, oh man, where'd that come from? Uh, that ever happened, and once you're done with whatever the situation was that, that brought that up, or, or that you were reacting to in that way, you think, man... I handled that great. Didn't make any mistakes. You know what? I had to do that again. Well, I think if you're being honest and if I'm being honest, um, anger does not usually bring about a, that was the best moment of my life. I think I just handled that situation so well. It uh, doesn't usually bring out those kind of responses in us. Now, being able to operate under pressure, this is a good thing. Uh, right, being able to to handle anger and being able to redirect it um, to use it constructively, definitely good. We're told here in James chapter one. Know this, my brothers: let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. The anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. When we get fired up about something, we realize something isn't right, um, it's very easy for our, that isn't right, this needs to be addressed, something needs to get done right now, kind of response uh, to kick in. And we don't always make good decisions under pressure or reflexively when we're reacting to a situation, especially when our emotions get in get involved we become emotionally invested uh, we feel like we've been wronged or offended somehow um, these situations do not do not bring about the kind of righteousness the uh, trusting in God's trusting God for what is right for what the way that he directs us to live uh, anger really doesn't promote that it's not sinful in and of itself but it is something that we have to, when we become invested, and when, we, when anger comes, when we get angry, it is very, very important that we pump the brakes and realize, okay, there's a big risk right now of me allowing this to run away, uh, to get out of control, and I need to stop, and I need to remember that God is God, and I'm not. It says, on... Verse uh, 21, therefore, so because the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God, therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, right? The gospel implanted in our hearts, which is able to save your souls. Because anger does not produce the righteousness of God, we're to put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. Why? Well, one reason might be when we get corrected, when someone tells you that you're wrong, that the way you've been doing everything is wrong, that the way that you're living is not right, do you usually just say thank you and accept that and roll on? Probably not. Most folks today would react pretty harshly to that. 
because the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God, we need to be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. We need to put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But, so now there's a contrast being being introduced. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We go on from there, but we'll stop there at verse 22. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, so deceiving yourselves. One of my favorite verses. Basically what we're getting to is what we started out with. When we're operating reflexively, reactively, when we're seeing a situation, getting fired up about it, and that's not right. It's probably not. So is me jumping into the fray with fist clenched, teeth bared, eyes, you know, the whites of my eyes visible, is that is that going to be what helps to bring peace to a situation that answers all the all the problems and gets things done? Sometimes a direct word is what's needed. And the Bible is full of situations like that where um Speaking a direct word, uh, speaking simple truth, uh, truth spoken in love into a situation is what was needed, uh, and and brought life to those who who were stuck in a rut, who were in all kinds of bad situation, and had no way forward. That being said, even though we can get a hold of things like anger, uh, things like depression, things like anxiety. Um, And anger is specifically being addressed here in James. Even though it can be redirected for good things, it's very volatile. The anger, our anger does not bring about that righteous life that God desires for us. In fact, it is... It is an invitation. It usually extends the invitation to, "Hey, why don't you walk on the wild side a little bit? Just, just, just let it, let it out just a little bit." No one will know, and even if they do, it's only once. It doesn't matter. Except that the next time it becomes harder and harder to keep it contained and to be able to let it off in healthy ways uh, that don't hurt the people that you love the people who are counting on you and the people who the lord has positioned around you to show them what it looks like to be his people you know be people who love him and who are being remade by him be quick to hear slow to speak slow to anger for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of god you know, we look at things today. We got um, stuff going on with China, uh, and it looking like there's going to be some some movements here, possibly into Taiwan. Uh, we've got the war right now in the U- in Ukraine and Russia making all kinds of statements and everything that's been going on on the news and stuff. Um, there's the stuff going on in Ohio with the rail car that um, derailed, and then the one in Carolinas, and then the one in Texas, you know, cars derailing from from trains. Like, what in the world's going on? It seems like there's something wrong going on, and it'd be easy to look at all these things and to really get fired up and to look at things going on in the world stage and. How, how is it that this is going on while this is happening over here? And it seems like there's things being set up in a certain way for certain results to happen. And this just isn't right, Lord. I, we need to do something about this. And for me to get fired up and worked up and taking on things the Lord may never have, in, have told me this is what I need to do. But because I get fired up and zealous in the moment... 
I move out from beyond his covering, the place that he has that he has put me and entrusted to me. Don't let that happen to you. Don't be, like Paul says, uh, carried away by your own desires, right, and tempted to to indulge in those temptations and and move into sin because we couldn't keep a lid on our anger. I know it's easy and it's trendy and popular to be offended and upset and and disgusted with insert new thing to be disgusted with on whatever day it is. There's so many things today. But we're not supposed to be blown left, right, and center with every breath of wind that comes through, every new fad that comes through. As the people of God, we're supposed to be set on a firm foundation, not blown around by new fads, new interests, new new doctrine, all this other stuff. We're supposed to be grounded on the Word of God. It means that as people, we, we can't be volatile. We can't be firing off one moment and brooding and and the kind of folks that people think, oh man, I don't even know. Which, which version of them am I going to get today? When someone's sharing with us the things that are going on, do we rush to an answer? Or do we listen to him first? Are we showing that we care in the way that we listen? Or are we, we rushing to make sure that, well, I got the answer in. I, I, I've provided the knowledge that's needed here. And so whatever you do with this is up to you. But, well, that can work. But it seems that lives are changed when we take time to be quick to hear we listen well we're slow to speak until the Lord tells us what to say and then we speak fearlessly in love and definitely be slow to anger whether you're insulted um whether things are done or said that you don't like, you f- don't allow for your anger to get the best of you. Because if it gets the best of you, God and everyone else around you will get your leftovers. God's better than your leftovers. His bride is better than my leftovers. And as I was reading this here, I just wanted to be able to talk to you about it a little bit. What are you seeing here? Is there something else that's going on that you'd like to be able to draw attention to? If there is, please feel free, please feel welcome to interact with me in the comments, um, be able to talk with me some more. I'd love to be able to hear your input on this and uh, if there's other passages that um, seem to balance in some way like maybe maybe there's uh something else that scripture says that you like to draw attention to and we can get into a conversation about that um i'd love to be able to get into more with you but uh, as far as right now just want to be able to leave leave you with this here about hearing and doing the word we can wrap a rationale in our minds about why we do things and and uh convince ourselves that really it's it's just for us to be angry there's times for that right but we shouldn't be known as people that we shouldn't be known for our anger right that's not going to identify us as the people that the lord has called us to be the way that people are going to know that we are disciples of jesus is by our love for one another So as I was reading this, and I guess where I'm where I'm leaving things today, um, what are you known for? 
Are you known as someone who listens well? Who, when you speak, everyone shuts up to listen? Someone who is patient and even keel? What are you known for? That's probably reflecting on the way that that the Lord is being displayed through you to other people. And that matters. That's why we're still here. And I know you want to do it well. So do I. And that's why we're here. Guys, this has been Brett Rogers, and I'm so happy to be here on the Logos Veritas podcast with you. Uh, if you've got any thing that you'd like for me to cover here and to get into on the podcast, please feel free to interact with me in the comments here. Um, I'm on Podbean that sends all of our stuff out to other podcast uh, applications and everything. Uh, we're also on YouTube, and you can reach me at, if you want to email me, you can email me at logosveritaspodcast at gmail.com. It's been good talking to you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you here next time on the Logos Veritas podcast. God bless you.